Hey guys and welcome to yet another WX Python tutorial. Here in this video we're going to take a look at the WX status bar. Okay, it's a pretty cool widget which I haven't seen in many other GUI libraries. Okay, so this is something I kind of found pretty interesting in WX Python. Okay, so it's pretty cool that it has some interesting uses. So let's get right into it. So the first thing is what is a status bar? Well, a status bar is something that appears at the bottom of your screen Typically, it provides stuff like tips or something, like you're hovering over something, and it provides a tool tip yeah, that comes written down here. I think that there's even a status bar over here, you know, you, in my window over here for my Python IDE. You see this thing down here? I believe this is actually what would be counted as a status bar, okay? So, at any rate, there's... Uh, the best way to actually take a look at it is to make it ourselves and then take a look at it. So yeah, let's go ahead and begin. Okay. Now there are two ways of creating the status bar. Okay. There's the typical way, you know, where you do something like self dot uh, status bar. So S B. Then you could do W X dot status bar. Okay, and go ahead and pass in those parameters. You can go ahead and do that. But there is another more interesting way that's also easier which is simply doing this self dot create status bar. This is a method that actually belongs to the frame. Okay. The frame actually has this method and it also has one for self dot create toolbar. Okay. Because the status bar and the toolbar are basically meant to go on the frame. So it kind of makes sense for the frame to have a function for it as well. Okay. But basically this is all you had to do. Okay you've made your status bar. Okay. We'll now work with this. Okay. So the thing is what I want to do, what kind of application that I want to make is a window with a, with a bunch of widgets. Okay. And now once I hover over each one of those widgets, okay, like let's say I have a button widget and when I hover over it, what I want to do is uh, the status bar to actually display some information about it. Okay. And that's basically what I want to do. Okay. Don't worry, if you don't get what I'm doing right now, you will by the end of this video, okay? So let's go ahead and quickly create a bunch of widgets. Self.button, okay? WX.button, okay? Self.panel. And what's the label going to be? Something like click me, I think. Position it somewhere generic, like that. And we don't need to do anything else. And what else is there? I can create text to it, widget it, it. WX.static text, okay? And dot, dot pan, panel label will be uh, quarter leg. Okay, then the position can be just something like 250. Okay, and what else is there? I can make a combo box. Okay, wx dot combo box self dot panel. <sighs> okay, what else is there? Well, there's value, of course. I'll just leave out the entire drop down list over here. I'm just going to take a shortcut. Okay, um, what should this be? Default. Okay, and I'll position it somewhere down there. Okay, and what? One more, one more. I'll make a radio button. Okay, self dot panel, and it has a label, right? I hope it's a label and not a value. We'll find out. Option one. Oh, all right and then position it somewhere down there. Okay, let's just run this now to ensure that everything was created properly. Oh, okay, typo there, static text. Come on, all right, there we go. It's all looking good. Okay, and we can even see the status bar down here. Look at that. You can see this uh, status bar. You see this little thing down here as well, this little uh, grip sort of these little dots. Okay. This is actually part of the default style of the status bar. Okay. It's called, uh, well, actually the default style actually consists of two or three different styles. Okay. But this style in specific is called size grid. Okay. Uh, it's meant for resizing and stuff basically. Okay. So this line over here basically is the boundary of the status bar. Okay. But there's nothing in it yet. So yeah, but at any rate, these are our four widgets. Okay, there's nothing in here because I didn't create anything because that's not relevant. Okay, so 
Uh, here's the important part, okay? What I'm going to do now is basically define a function called on hover, okay? This function will decide what happens once we hover over the widget or any widget, okay, basically. So what I'm going to do is self.sb dot set status text, okay? And you can already guess what this means, honestly. It means setting the text that appears on the status bar. Okay, there's, there's not much to it. It's pretty simple, pretty clear cut. Okay, so what do I want the text to be? Well, do you know what this E here is for? I explain this almost every single video of mine, but again, I just don't know whether you guys are following through from the start or just, you know, coming in randomly. Okay, so I kind of feel the need to explain this. Because what E is basically is the event, okay? Because all GUI systems are basically event driven, okay? You click on a button, it generates an event, okay? And then that event basically triggers the function, okay? That's how it works. So this is basically the event, okay? The event of us, you know, hovering over something, okay? I haven't added that part in yet, okay? But we will in a minute. But basically, what I want to show you guys is this E dot get event object you might have seen me do this do this before okay what this does is it is gets the event that sorry it gets the widget that generated this event like if i hover over the button okay then uh it's gonna be the one generating this event okay at any rate basically what i want to do now is call another function on this called get class name Okay, this is a function that's available in every single widget. Okay, what it does is it returns the class name. Like, what's the class name for a button? It's a WX button. Okay, what's the class name for uh, the, you know, the text over here? It's WX.StaticText. Okay, so that's basically what get class name does. Now, what I'm going to do here is, in, or is say widget plus widget. And you'll understand what this means very soon. Okay, trust me. Now, what I want to do now is basically bind these these widgets to the on hover function. Okay, and of course we, we need an appropriate event as well. Okay, so what is the event that I need? Well, I want to do this when our cursor, our mouse cursor, once it enters the region, uh, you know, the region that the widget takes. Okay, so if I want to do this, if I want to do this, if I want to make an event, actually, sorry, not make an event, if I want to use an event where we're basically entering the window, okay, or the radius of the widget, there's actually an event for this called, uh, what was it, wx underscore event uh, enter window, yeah, so we'll go ahead and do that now, okay, I spent way too much time talking, we really need to actually just bind these already. Okay, self.panel.bind.wx.event underscore enter window. Okay, the, there's an underscore between these two as well. Okay, then over here I'll write self.onHover. Okay, and I'm going to quickly copy paste this. Oh, come on. For the other three. Or the other four, actually, because we have these four widgets over here and then the panel as well. Okay, I, I want to do it for all five. So I just keep changing these. This is a button. This is text. This is CB. And this is RB. Okay. Now I think that's good. Let's go ahead and run this. All right. Now, what should happen here? Once I enter the, uh, the panel, it should print out the name, right? In the status bar, because I linked the panel as well currently is showing nothing okay let me move over slowly to the panel and there you go it says wx panel widget okay now let me move over to the button it says wx button widget now let me move off the button it goes back to saying wx panel widget let me move to the static text widget and it says wx static static widget and let me move over to the radio button now it says the radio button widget I move over to the combo box. It says combo box widget. Okay, so again, this is pretty cool. Okay, you gotta admit. Okay, this is something kind of nice. It makes your GUI feel more professional. 
okay like it's not just something made by an amateur okay so this is pretty cool okay so yeah this is pretty much the main part of the video and now let's briefly discuss some other functions and styles that you can use okay well um, how do I put this? There are a few interesting styles and functions. We've already discussed one over here. There's also one called, you know, self.sp.getStaticText, but we don't really need to use that right now, honestly. So yeah, forget that. Forget that one. There's one called self.sp.min. Sorry, set min height. Okay. This one is used to set the minimum height for your status uh, bar, okay? You may want this, you may not want this, okay? It's totally up to you, okay? And what else is there? Well, okay, there is one more thing that I want to mention. Uh, hmm, it's a bit difficult. Can I pass, just pass in styles over here? I've never tried this before. So, wx dot stb, that's for status bar default style okay i don't want to override that so that's why i'm including that in here then i'll do stb underscore ellipsize end okay don't worry i'll explain this in a minute i just want to see if it works okay it does work good now what i want to do actually is just um type in a bunch of nonsense over here okay now just watch i'm gonna move over and now, do you see those little ellipses at the end of this widget? Sorry, at the end of the text. Those three little dots. That's basically what the ellipsize style does. Is that if the text is getting too big, what it does is that it, you know, adds an ellipsis. Okay, it basically cuts it off and adds ellipsis. Okay, so it doesn't look bad. It looks good. It looks natural right now. Okay, it looks like that we're actually handling the situation. Okay, so yeah. That, this is just something I want to tell you guys. There are other, there are two other versions of this. There's middle, and then there's um, start. Okay, as you can guess, what they do is simply change the position of where the ellipses occur if the text is too big. Okay, if you do start, then the ellipses will appear in the start. If you do middle, they're, they're you know they'll appear in the middle. Okay, so that's kind of up to you. But yeah, basically we're done. There aren't actually too many styles and functions for the status bar, so we're done here. We've covered almost all of them. There might be some left, in which case you can go check out my website, okay? Because I include a full list of stuff over there, okay? It's too boring and kind of redundant to actually say and, you know, show all of them in a video where, you know, you guys might get bored, you know, info dump. So that's why I leave the boring stuff for the website. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Subscribe if you want to see more content and follow other WX Python videos, other cool Python videos. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in a later video. Bye then.